This is an excerpt from my book, Bricklin on Technology. It starts on page 17. It's called The Mindset of an Engineer. To understand the writings in this book, it helps to understand the mindset of the engineer, innovator, and entrepreneur. Part of that mindset comes from what motivates me. Understanding some of the drives that I have will help you see why I focus on certain aspects of situations in my writings. Those drives are commonly found in other people in my field, and knowing about them can put what we choose to do and say in perspective. People in different fields of endeavor are often motivated by different drives. They get great joy out of satisfying those drives. For example, teachers feel rewarded when they successfully help students who are struggling to discover the key to a new concept, or when they introduce a child to a field that becomes their life's work. Some people are driven by wanting to win, no matter what the field. Others are driven by wanting to help others who are in need, in pain or suffering. Yet others are driven by wanting to express themselves in some medium, such as paint or song, and bring new beauty and understanding into the world. Let's take a look at the drives that motivate an engineer. One drive is the drive to build things, especially things that others will use. Engineers love to take components and put them together to create a greater whole. We build the world. Engineers love to have their, world ac their work actually used. There is beauty in something well designed, but there is also beauty in something that actually enhances someone else's life. Part of good design is solving the problems inherent in what existed before and thereby improving upon it. This talk of love, beauty, and building the world brings up a spiritual side of being an engineer. Here is an old parable that, as an engineer, always brings a smile to my face. It comes from the prayer book created by members of Congregation Bethel of the Sudbury River Valley and is read by many of the congregants every Friday night at the time when they are celebrating the beginning of the Sabbath and the remembering of the end of the last day of creation. It is based upon something found in a book of parables and commentaries from over 1,500 years ago. When the world was created, God made everything a little bit incomplete. Rather than making bread grow out of the earth, God made wheat grow so that we might bake it into bread. Rather than making the earth of bricks, God made it of clay so that we might bake the clay into bricks. Why? So that we might become partners in completing the work of creation. I see this as expressing a view of a sacred place for the engineer in the scheme of things. When Don Bulens joined me at Trellix as CEO, he had been a senior manager more experienced in working with sales forces and marketing people than developers. He was looking for help in understanding engineers. He found that he had problems understanding how they chose what to concentrate on. Being connected to sales in the bottom line, he was very driven by types of success that he could easily understand and measure. But the engineers all seemed to march to a different drummer. I told him an illustrative tale that I had heard that I thought would help him understand the mindset of many of us. This is how I remember the story. Three men are brought to the guillotine to be executed, a lawyer, a doctor, and an engineer. The lawyer has his head placed in the device first. The executioner pulls the lever and the blade comes screaming down. Miraculously, the blade screeches to a halt just inches above his neck. As a lawyer, he quickly points out that the law states that they have but one chance at execution. He has led away a free man. Next, the doctor is brought up. Again, the blade starts its journey at full speed, only to get stuck and, ju and stop just in the nick of time. Having observed what happened with the lawyer, he demands that he too be freed, and he is. Finally, it is the engineer's turn. As they push him into place, he turns his head and looks up. Wait, he cries. I think I see the problem. The apparent absurdity of this story of being so much the engineer, trying to understand and fix the problem of the minute, even to your own detriment, really worked for Don. He could see this, that same story played out again and again in front of him. As an engineer, you feel the dilemma of that poor condemned man dying to figure out an engineering problem and help others, even when there was a good reason not to. Over the years, we'd make reference to that story. Remember the guillotine? It continued to be helpful to remind us of some of the motivations of engineers and the need to make sure that they understand the corporate problems, like meeting particular needs of customers, that might not be as obvious for them to consider. For more information about the book, go to my website, www.bricklin.com.